gifts and the dreams of the people that they were bringing up. Those that were stronger in the faith did not run off the new converts. The old leaders didn't press down or press the new leaders that were coming up. They were working together. Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 says he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Our sole purpose is to help the saints grow so that they can perfect their gifts, to use your gifts to build up the body of Christ. So when you come into the ministry and you say, wait a minute now, they're not praising God, they're not worshiping God, we're missing this, we're missing that. If you have that gift, then it's your responsibility and we'll help you perfect that gifts that God has given you so that now you can share it with the body, that you can reproduce, that you can show somebody else how to get an end. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. Your gift is not for you. Your gift is for the kingdom. Every gift is to build up the body for Christ. The singers build up. The ushers build up. Greeters build up. Housekeepers build up. The dead team, your purpose is to build up. The poetry is to build up. Teachers it's to build up. All the fivefold gifts. It's to build up. It's not to get the big head and to get a title. It's to build up the kingdom. The musicians, it's to build up. Amen. Scholars, it's to build up. If you're on the internet, it's to build up. It's so that you can brag and boast about how high your IQ is. What you doing for the kingdom? I know people with no degree, not even a high school diploma, that sold out for God. If you're not using it to build up, what you doing? Offers is to build up, and the intercessors is to build up. Whatever your gift is, whatever your gift is, if you if you're going in the sports arena, it's to build up. We got to have a representative in every area. It's to build up, and the midwives and the leaders, we got to stop killing the gifts, stop killing the babies. I was watching the show this morning. And Leandria was on there, Sunday's Best Winner. Some of you may have seen it. And Leandria struggled with being Sunday's Best because she wasn't perfect, which none of us are. The difference is she didn't try to hide it. She got pregnant right after Sunday's Best, and they had this big schedule lined up for her, her this tour schedule lined up for her, and she said her, past, her pastor, her bishop is her dad, and he called her in. He said, I don't condone what you've done, but I love you and I'm going to cover you. You do what God has called you to do. You hold your head up. She said she had family members tell her, you need to have an abortion. You're going to lose your title. She had people tell her, you need to get married so you can cover it up. People, the midwives, those people that should have been encouraging her, those people that should have been covering her, those people that should have been pushing her was telling her to kill somebody, her own baby. She said she would show up and she would get ready for a tour, get ready for an event because the pastor had found out that she was pregnant. They said, you're not welcome. You're not welcome here in our church. So the pastors, the church, closed their doors. The midwives closed their doors on one of their very own right when she was at the place of giving birth. Her ministry was just being launched in the house of God. The midwives, those that were stronger in the faith, did not cover our sister and coach our sister and tell her when to push. But instead, we shut the door. That was her word. They shut doors on me. God is not pleased with that. Verse 20 said, so God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied. When the midwives, when the leaders, when those that are strong in the faith know who you are in God, when you understand your assignment is to reproduce, is to build up the kingdom, when we're in place and we help the men and women of God, not only will boom grow, our community will feel the effects of the growth. Amen. The body of Christ will experience exponential growth. Midwives coach those who are fit. And I can't point out who the midwives are because each one of you have your own spirit influence. There are people that you can coach, people that you can encourage that will never come in here, that will never listen to me, but they'll listen to you. Midwives are to teach those that are unsure. The reason that people are unsure is because they don't have the word of God on the inside of them. It's the midwives' job to coach and to teach those that are unsure. It's the midwives' job to comfort those who need an ear. Sometimes people don't need you to give them the scripture. They just need you to listen. Amen. When somebody has lost a loved one, quit telling them God knows best. Because you know what that does in the midst of their grief and they're not strong. 
strong in their faith. Now they ain't mad at what happened. They mad at God. Because if God can do anything, why God didn't save my loved one? You got to be careful. Your motives may be good. But we got to be wise. Midwives got to be in place to provide all that's needed. During the process. Not comparing and jealous. Now. We know the story of Saul and David, but I'm sure you know some folks in Vidalia that deal with that same thing. The very people that should be pushing you, the very people that should be pouring into you, are the very people that speak in negative over you, are the very people rolling their eyes, or they are smiling and they'll talk to you so they can get all your information as soon as you leave. They're talking about you and speaking death and speaking life over your vision and speaking life death over your ministry. The very people. The midwives, those that should be pushing, we got to genuinely want to see the growth and push the body of Christ forward. We got to quit having such a separation with the titles. There was a visitor that came in and said, y'all just call yourselves pastors, but everything y'all spoke into our lives came forth. Y'all are prophets of God. I said, we know who we are. <laughs> we know who God called us to be. Pastor, it's just user friendly. Because, see, I'm not called just to the church. I'm called to the nations. I'm called to businesses where I'll teach and I'll train in businesses. You got to understand who you're dealing with. That don't mean that you're not who God called you to be. You just got to use wisdom to the carriers of the anointing. Now, we talk to the midwives, to the leaders, to those of you that's pregnant with what God has. To the carriers of the anointing, to the carriers of the gift, to the carriers of the next level blessing, you must get in position to bring forth what God has put in you. Not what Pastor Choi and Elder Jackson put in you, what God has put on the inside of you. It is not, it's not for you. You got to get in position so that you can grow. You got to get in position. So that you can learn. So that when this thing comes forth, whatever this idea is, it could be a business. It could be a book. It could, I don't know what it is. Only you and God know what he's put on the inside of you. But I come to tell you that when you get in position and you allow that thing to burn forth, everybody will be blessed from it. It won't be just you. You'll be able to live off of it and bless millions. Just simply being in position. Turn to Isaiah, the 66th chapter. I'm going to show you how God is going to do this thing as we birth forth. 